In the previous video, we defined the multiple linear regression model, and we looked at the loss function for this model, how the squared loss works with multiple linear regression. We've written out the loss function in a matrix form, and now in this video, we will actually optimize the parameters by taking the derivative of the loss function and setting that equal to zero. We will also return to that first example that I started with, the Boston house price data, and we will see what the model fit looks like when we get the optimal parameter settings. So just as a quick reminder, this is the slide that we left off with last time. And here on the right side, you can see the loss function written down in matrix form. This will be our starting point for taking the derivatives with respect to the parameters. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the loss with respect to the vector w, and then we're going to set it equal to zero, which is the same as setting each of the uh, individual elements equal to zero. So we take the function that we got from before, and this is just our loss, and we take the vector derivative of that function with respect to w. And this gives the result and that we have here. So this thing doesn't have any w's in it, so we drop that. The derivative of this is equal to this, and the derivative of this is equal to this. How the fudge did I do that? I cheated. I went on Wikipedia and I found my identities there. I specifically used um, these two identities that we actually also looked at in the vector and matrix derivatives video. And that then leads to this result. And the next step is we're going to set that equal to zero. If we do that, then we can take over this to the other side. We can eliminate the twos and we get this result here. And then we can make W the subject of that equation. So we take the inverse of X transpose X on both sides and then we get this result here. And this result is quite crucial. It actually has a very special name. It's called the normal equations. And the cool thing is you just calculate um, the answer to using your design matrix and your target vector. And in one line of Python or MATLAB, you can get the estimate for all of your D plus one parameters from W0 up to WD. And we denote this optimal setting as we did in simple linear regression. We didn't note that with the hat on top of the W. Okay, so let's see what happens when we take this approach. And I've implemented this one line of Python um, on the Boston data set that we looked at in the start. So this is actually the fit that surface to the 506 neighborhoods in the subset of the Boston data set that we're looking at. So it makes sense. We've got this linear plane in this, um, in this plot where we have our rooms and our low status households and our price on this axis. So the plane in this figure, we can actually go and write down its equation and it looks like this. Very quickly as an, a reminder, the price is the target va variable. The rooms is X1 and the percentage of low income households in that neighborhood is equal to X2. So let's just write this here. So this is rooms and this is percentage uh, low status. And this surface here, this surface is described by this equation. So the optimal settings, I found it in Python for W0, for W1 and for W2 are these numbers. If we changed W0 up and down a little bit more, then we would basically move the surface up and down like this. Um, if we changed these two values, then we would change the tilt of the surface. Now, if you just look at these numbers, which is really a summary of this data set, what can you actually say about the data? Here are some questions, and I'm not going to give the answers directly, so you need to think a little bit. Questions that you can answer when you look at the values of these parameters. So let's say the number of low status households in a neighborhood is 10%. Does the median house price go up or down when I increase the number of rooms according to this model? And where do you see that in the model equation? It's maybe a first question. Maybe a slightly more intricate question. Let's say the number of rooms are fixed at some number. I'm not telling you what the number is, but I tell you that the number of rooms here is a fixed value for a particular neighborhood. 
how does the median house price change according to my model when I go from 10% to 20% low status households? Just looking at the equation, what happens if my rooms are fixed and I change my the percentage of low status households? So this number x1 is fixed some value and I change x2 from 10% to 20%. How does that affect the prediction of the price? The one thing to keep in mind while thinking about these questions is that we are answering them by trying to interpret the parameters from a linear model. In other words, we are bound by this assumption that the house price is a linear function of the number of rooms and the number of percentage low status households in that neighborhood. And this assumption might actually be very wrong. Okay, The benefit of a linear model is that we can look at the parameters and try and interpret them, but we need to keep in mind that the linear assumption might actually be wrong. So this raises one question which is how can we actually introduce nonlinearity into our model? Okay, but in this case, if we look at the fit of this plane to the data, and especially if you can have a look at this in 3D and rotate the plane, you will see that actually this fit is pretty good, right? Just looking at the scattering of the points and the surface, it does look like a okay fit to the data. But that's quite subjective, right? So I think a, a second question if you just look at this slide that should come up is, is there a more systematic way in which we can actually evaluate the models? Whether we can actually say whether a model is a good or a bad fit to the data. So it's maybe worth just re-emphasizing those last two questions again. The first is, what can we do if we have a non-linear relationship between our in inputs X and the target that we want to predict Y? And the second question is that we looked at this slide and we said, listen, this looks like a relatively good fit to the data by just looking at the surface and where the data is. But that's very subjective. So the second important question is, can we get a more systematic way for telling whether a model is actually good or bad? So in the next video, we will first look at the first of these questions. So we will look at how we can introduce nonlinearity into a regression model. And then in the next set of videos, we will look at how we actually evaluate um, machine learning models and linear regression models in particular.